Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And this is a show about proof. Proof of what, you might ask? How about proof of life force? Science doesn't know much about life force. It's interesting that they don't, but we're going to find out all about life force. This is the scientific basis of it. And it's, it's a book that's the break, that holds a breakthrough physics of energy medicine, healing chi, and quantum consciousness. And the author of this book is a, a physicist, a, a, a Dr. Claude Swanson, who is our guest. And he has written this uh, quite massive book of scientific proof of life force. Claude, welcome to the show. Thank you, Peter. Glad to be here. I'm I'm so glad you could join us. Uh, this this book is quite amazing. You've you must have worked on it for thirty years. <laughs> <laughs> That's not not far off, really. <laughs> right, it has so much in it, and and your background is is a you're a physicist in uh, MIT and Princeton. Yes, that's right. Undergraduate MIT, PhD, Princeton, right? You've been around, and uh, and you've been intrigued by what science doesn't, not only doesn't understand, but can't even wrap their hands around at all. And you've been well, yes, yeah. I I, I just wanted to say, you know, I um, had a conventional physics education. You know, the idea was I was learning all the rules of the universe and how things are supposed to operate. And a few years after I was finished, I began hearing rumors about something called remote viewing. And um, that, you know, for anyone who's conventionally educated, when you hear about something like this, where people's minds can be set out into the universe and bring back information from far away, your mind just kind of boggles. You can't really believe it. Uh, but now, many years later, we have lots of evidence that these things really happen. So we're kind of learning that the mind has a lot more power and more abilities than our conventional science would have explained. You know, if you take the major forces I was taught about in school, like electromagnetism and gravity and the nuclear forces, uh, you can't understand how it's possible to uh, affect things at a distance or transfer information. But we're learning through lots of experiments that these things really do happen. So we're sort of at the crossroads of, of a new revolution in physics um, as we start to look at this new force and try to understand how it is that we can do these things. And your book is packed with research that actually, uh, and well illustrated, that shows uh, the proof of 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 energy as it's as it moves through what we might think of as time and space, but it obviously uh, works on a different level, and yet it the results are there, and I guess that's what is really important is that uh, these experiments actually show that, for instance, in the early part of your book, you talk about qigong masters and what happens when they use their energy? And then how do you have proof of their energy? Right. We're very, we're very uh, blessed. We're living in a time now where uh, we in America are talking to and interacting with the Chinese who have a 4,000-year-old history uh, and tradition of dealing with this kind of energy. Uh, for them, this is the conventional medicine the 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 eastern medicine uh, uses this energy called chi uh which is really controlled by the mind and is really essential for the health and the life of every living creature and uh there are certain people called uh, qigong masters who are part of a healing tradition in china and they can use this energy to cause uh changes and experiments that physicists can measure so we have lots of hard data now that this energy is able to change uh, decay rates of radioactive elements, uh, affect the structure of water, causing changes in uh, various types of, of ways of measuring the molecular structure of water, uh, lots of different things that you can measure in the laboratory, bending laser beams, things like that. And the amazing thing about this force, uh, chi or the life force, is that uh, these individuals can control it at, at a distance. They don't have to be right next to it. They can go a thousand miles away. 
And we have data from the National Physics Institute in China showing that the most expert of these people can do it, can affect things even at large distances. So we're talking about a new kind of force uh, that uh, in Western science doesn't really exist, and yet when we look back, it's really the essence of what enables us all to live. It's, it's the key to how we're able to metabolize our food so uh, efficiently, how we can heal ourselves uh, so well. It's, it's the central part of the uh, traditional Eastern uh, medicine. So it's really an important uh, time as we try to get in the West, get our, our science to upgrade and uh, modernize and try to include this new force and understand how it fits in. It's a whole new way of thinking. And Western medicine is so scientifically based on the externals. And everything, not only do, do, does everybody need to see the proof, and in, in China, I'm sure they needed to see the proof too, but they saw it experientially. They, you know, over thousands of years, they weren't using scientific instruments. They were using their lives to see how this force could shift them and and so and even shift objects and and move things around and science just doesn't wants to ignore anything it it doesn't already understand uh western science so to have somebody like you uh devote your life to bridging this to using science and uh material results that can be quantified so that the Western mind can even think about this or even be willing to acknowledge it at all. So, yeah, well, one of the things that I've been struggling with uh, as I've been studying this over the past 30 years is that we in the West really do think in a different way. We have a different paradigm. Uh, Western physics is based on the idea of materialism. We think of everything based on particles, which then have force fields, and then they interact with other particles with forces. And that's kind of our model. Uh, the Eastern tradition is very different, and uh, Qi, uh, the life force, these traditions go back uh, at least 4,000 years into many of the cultures that are found in Asia and even other places around the world. So the more you look into it, the more you find that these forces are not new. They've been around a long time, but we in the West have just been ignoring it. Uh, you know, you, you go back 100 years when quantum physics started. Uh, in the early days, Einstein and Niels Bohr used to have debates about uh, what happens when you observe an experiment, when you make a measurement. And they noticed that when an observer makes a measurement, he actually affects the experiment. There is a quantum effect when the observer makes a measurement. Uh, so they knew even then that consciousness does affect physical reality, and they had to take it into account. But after that first admission, uh, pretty much since then, Western physics has ignored consciousness, and, and you can't even publish uh, papers on consciousness in mainstream physics journals. It's considered, well, that's something else. That's far out stuff. Uh, and yet now we're finding that consciousness really does affect physics in a wide variety of ways, and uh, you know, the more we study it, the more we're finding that we have to include the effects of consciousness in understanding all of the things that happen in the universe. So that's really what I'm trying to do in this book is pull together experiments and evidence from lots of different traditions uh, and lots of different scientists to show that this force, uh, the, the life force, is a real force that has consequences you can measure, uh, that it's really essential to understanding how healing works, and it's also essential to understand how consciousness um, enables us to reach out into the universe and get information from other places. So uh, it's really an important part of understanding uh, the inner workings of our universe that's been kind of left out of uh, Western uh, mainstream physics. And, and even in medicine, there's uh, medicine is not interested in information fields, it's not in, interested in vital force it, and, and the vitality of organs and glands other than what their chemistry is. Uh, whereas if you were looking at the energy of the body, it speaks from its source of, of what makes it tick. And, and it changes the nature of, of how we look at the body, how we understand health and wellness. 
and it's it's totally different than Western medicine only looking at the results of all of this. Uh, of this, what, what, if there's energy missing, for instance, they only know the results of it. They have no idea that it has to do with energy missing. Yeah, the, the Eastern traditional medicine was based on a whole different paradigm where you pay the doctor when you stay well. The do, it's, it's all based on preventive medicine and identifying health problems very early and correcting them. That's really how the doctors were paid in the old uh, Chinese system. While we, uh, the big bucks, are always after you get sick, then you go to the hospital and you know spend a huge, huge amount of money trying to fix it, which is after the fact. It's a very different uh, way of looking at things. The, the other part that I have learned in writing this book and, and the research I've done is that there's an understanding of what a living system is that is pretty much missing in Western uh, science today. Um, in, we, have a, we know the DNA. We have DNA molecules, and that has the genetic code of life. We know that uh, the DNA produces various proteins and other structures that make each person individual and unique. But, you know, in our bodies, in a human body, uh, the DNA for one person is the same throughout the body. In your toenail, in your uh, hair follicle, in your cornea of your eyes, in your brain tissue, in your liver tissue, the DNA is identical. Yet somehow the DNA knows to make different types of tissue, different types of proteins, different structure in different parts of the body. This has been one of the missing big questions in Western physiology for a long time. Uh, what I've discovered is that really the, there is a blueprint, an energetic hol hologram, if you like, of energy. It's called, they're called biophotons. Every DNA in the body is constantly making electromagnetic signals called DNA, called uh, biophotons. And these couple together, uh, there's work done in Germany, uh, Fritz Albert Pop, which shows that basically inside the body we're filled with light. These uh, light signals from the DNA connect together in a coherent way, making a, a hologram like a laser. And so there's a pattern that is kept inside the body that's actually a guide to how the DNA knows to specialize, to make a liver cell if it's in the liver, to make a fingernail cell if it's in the fingernail. Uh, so this idea of a energetic hologram in the body is one of the really new discoveries in energetic medicine. It's the key to wellness because it tells the cells how to heal. If, uh, if you tear something or you cut something, those cells need to know how to specialize when they make new cells to repair the wound. So, and it's that blueprint, it's a blueprint right. that tells them how to do that. So what you're saying is that these um, biophotons are, uh, and, and the programming of them is like a biocomputer in the body that actually guides the DNA. So when we when we hear all about DNA, no one I, I haven't heard anybody talking about biophotons. So except you, I mean you know the other people who are, but I don't know them. Yeah. So well, this, uh, this, where is science going with this? Well, it's a fairly new field. Uh, Fritz Albert Pop is a scientist in Germany. Back in the early 70s, he was the first person who discovered how important biophotons are. Of course, at that time, he was ridiculed. He experienced enormous uh, difficulties initially doing research. Forty years later, uh, it's pretty much the accepted norm among scientists at the forefront uh, in doing research now that, they, that there's a huge body of research to show that the DNA is a very active uh, a creator of signals, like uh, photons, uh, receives them and sends them throughout the body so that this uh, coherent blueprint really does uh, seem to be real. Um, and um, so this is sort of becoming the new, the, the new norm, if you like, for understanding how it is that we regulate our own growth and our healing. Uh, the important thing for energy medicine is that whenever there's a, a defect, in your pattern of this blueprint, uh, whenever that leads to illness, that's the first thing that has to happen when illness occurs. So when you want to understand how uh, energy healers are able to uh, look inside the body and uh, sense when something's wrong and make changes, it's because they're tapping into this energy field, this energetic blueprint that's associated with the DNA, uh, which is both electromagnetic. 
uh, which is uh, the biophotons inside the body. And there's also a part outside the body which is connected to that, which is some, another recent discovery. It's called the torsion field, and that's what it makes up the aura. People who've heard about uh, energy healers talk about the aura, this energy field outside the body, and yet our scientists have been unable to measure it so far because it's not a conventional electromagnetic signal. It's a, a, a torsion field, which the Russians discovered about 40 years ago. Uh, so there are these new discoveries that are really helping us to take energy medicine from a sort of a mythological, um, sort of traditional uh, format into something scientific where we're starting to develop uh, instruments now that can uh, measure these fields and understand them in a scientific way. So it's, a, it's an exciting time as these two uh, you know, worldviews, the East and the West, kind of come together. And now there's a, a different uh, terminology about the aura being a torsion field, but to a lot of people that doesn't mean anything other than the same thing as they might as well say aura. So as a torsion field, what what does that add to the quality of the aura to know that it's a torsion field? Well, one of the one area that has been interesting to me is energy healing, is the way that some people are able to send their, their energy, and we'll just use that word energy, and to cause healing of other people at a distance. These Qigong masters I mentioned in China are famous for that. It's a, a long tradition, lots and lots of scientific evidence to show it. I have lots of evidence in my book. My book has 720 pages, 1,500 references, uh, over 400 uh, graphs and figures, lots and lots of data to back up what I'm saying. But the bottom line is that there are these people who are able to uh, correct the patterns, to do healing of others from a distance by using what they call energy. Uh, the big question and the big challenge for science is, um, how does that work? What is that? What kind of energy? How can you possibly heal somebody or have any, any kind of effect on somebody else thousands of miles away? Uh, if you go back to the biophoton idea, uh, yes, inside the body we now know there are these little pulses of light from the DNA called photons, and they connect the DNA one to the other and allow them to communicate, and that acts like a hologram inside the body. But that's energy. If photons are energy. If you try to affect somebody a thousand miles away, it would take enough energy to light up a, a, a lighthouse. You know, it would be huge amounts of energy that would totally exhaust the person instantly. So using electromagnetism is not a practical way to explain how energy healing works. The way it works apparently is this other force, a new force that the Russians have discovered back in the 50s. Nikolai Kozarev was a very respected astronomer who first discovered this. Uh, he called it torsion, and it gets created whenever we create photons. Whenever light is made, uh, the Russians claim that these uh, torsion waves are also produced, but they take very little energy, and they penetrate much better than light waves do. So inside the body, we're mostly biophotons, but outside the body, this pattern is maintained by this torsion field. And that's what we were able to send long distances. That's what the healers are able to use to affect other people. And uh, so, so there's a, a huge amount of, of information uh, that's in Russia. Uh, it's, a lot of it's been sort of leaking out into uh, Easter, into uh, translation and some publications in recent years. But it really does seem to me to have the key elements that we need to be able to put together a complete scientific model of how uh, energy healing works. Now, a torsion field just sounds like energy, but we're actually talking about patterns of energy that are meaningful. And, and so the right. torsion actually holds meaning. Right. It, it's really because... Uh, inside the body, the DNA is all the time uh, emitting and absorbing little biophotons, little pulses of light. And it, 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 each little DNA acts like a laser in a way. There's a coherence to the energy from each DNA molecule. This is one thing that POP has been able to show. So that um, inside the body, the electromagnetic uh, signals going on are coherent. 
They have a re- relationship one to the other, a uh, phase relationship, which means they're able to produce a hologram. But from the Russian work, we also know whenever one of these uh, photon pulses gets created, it also makes a torsion wave. So that while you have a holographic pattern of electromagnetism inside the body, we have a holographic pattern of torsion outside the body. That means there's a structure to it. It's able to create uh, the various uh, structures of energy outside the body, which if people know, they're called chakras and things like that. Um, so um, there's a, actually there's a logic to this whole picture, and a whole picture is developed from trying to put together all these various pieces, a lot of which are quite recent. Um, for example, uh, one, of the, one of the really exciting areas that all fits with this is acupuncture. Acupuncture, as you know, uh, was pretty much unknown in America until about 1970 or 72 when Nixon went to China and uh, one of the people in his party uh, came down with appendicitis and had to be treated by the people's anti-imperialist uh, hospital in Beijing. And they used acupuncture as part of the process. And that's how acupuncture uh, became famous and achieved notoriety. And the president dictated that uh, a study be done of acupuncture in America. Well, you know, today, 40 years later, we're still struggling to understand some of the science behind acupuncture. In the last five years, Korean scientists have been able to photograph the meridians, these tiny little tubules that go through the body that carry the acupuncture signals. They're called acupuncture meridians. And so now we have documented proof these things are real. But even more recently, it's been discovered, they act like waveguides. They carry little microwave signals, uh, millimeter wave and other types of signals through the body that help keep this blueprint tied together. So it's a, a complex picture that is uh, taking shape here. We're understanding more and more every year the physics behind energy medicine. That's really what I'm trying to put together in this book to explain how it is that it's not just um, a lot of mysticism, but there's real experiments and real data and real theories, really, to back up how all this fits together. Well, let's fit it together now with consciousness, because so far, I mean, th- these these meridians are, are they're still physical; they're matter, and energy is moving through that matter. But what is the information that needs to change to create new vitality in the body, and and is it is it something that we can empower through our consciousness yeah, one of the discoveries of the, the Russian scientists uh, Nikolai Kozarev and others is that whenever there's a process a physical process that loses information they call it entropy increasing it loses information but actually there's another type of energy that is created at the same time that saves that information and can carry it and you can transfer it someplace else. So actually we don't lose information in the way that we thought in the old 19th century physics. Uh, it's possible to do things very efficiently. Uh, so this is what the torsion waves do. They're able to carry information and carry order, if you like, and help. Uh, this, uh, after all, one of the biggest jobs for the cells is to be building up uh, these complex structures of the various uh, vessels and vehicles inside each cell. Uh, so it's a process of building and doing it efficiently is a key. Uh, one of the mysteries for a long time has been how is it that living systems are so efficient? How can they produce so much order without losing information, without wasting energy? And it appears that this torsion energy is the key to that. Uh, so in the book, I talk uh, two chapters about this torsion energy, which is what the uh, Chinese call qi, and how it fits into this whole picture, how it preserves this order and helps the body to build things efficiently without wasting energy. Well, now let's look at somebody who has a physical ailment. And in, there is some modern understanding that if you have a physical ailment, it's often due to some psycho-emotional disturbance. So there's something out of balance in consciousness that becomes out of balance in the body. So it's an information glitch, let's say. But as you say, mm-hmm. there's no loss of, of, of data 
uh, it just gets transformed into something else. Yeah, one of, one of the really interesting uh, pieces of this whole puzzle, how the body responds when there is an illness, um, you can see by looking at uh, some of the acupuncture work that's been done in Eastern Europe in recent years uh, because they've been able to decode the signals that pass through the acupuncture meridians, and they actually carry little holograms, little holographic patterns for the various organs that they are responsible for uh, building up and maintaining. Uh, so what happens when somebody, you know, when you have an illness, let's say your your shoulder is sore, that's how you, how you broke something or you strained something, uh, the scientists are discovering that the signals in the acupuncture meridians actually become stronger in that area and make a pattern that corresponds to the injured tissue, the injured organ, and makes that part at a higher intensity than before. So the patterns of energy passing through the meridians uh, carry the repair signals that tell the body how to correct as it grows. So there's a sort of a self-correcting system here. The DNA, you know, fundamentally is making these holographic patterns, but the acupuncture meridian system is helping to carry it to inform the DNA at the location what it's supposed to be doing to help. Now, of course, an acupuncture uh, expert uh, or an energy healer or anyone else who's doing uh, alternative medicine is also trying to uh, assist in that pattern and making that pattern stronger or helping to correct that pattern. But the body is, has a built-in mechanism by which it increases the amplitude of the signal to try to help the body to correct for any illness or injury. Well, that's beautiful, and it's, it's nice to hear that even meridians have their own information system and and uh, know what they're doing actually in different parts of the body and you said originally you know that dna needs to know that a fingernail needs to be a fingernail not just another uh, c cell of the body that has no form in particular uh so this is uh, we only have a few minutes left and this is uh such a, a big discussion actually we've <laughs> been jumping around in it because there's so much to, to try to hold, and it's only a half an hour show. I'm sure we'll talk again in the future, uh, because we we all want to know more about this this whole idea of what how the body works in in reality, not just in the chemistry of it or the material nature of it, but the the life force and the information fields that create that life force. So this is. This is a great work that you've done. This book is available. It's called Life Force, the Scientific Basis. And you are Dr. Claude Swanson. How can people reach you? Uh, well, the best way is the website, which is synchronizeduniverse.com. Synchronized is S-Y-N-C-H-R-O-N-I-Z-E-D, Synchronized Universe. Or if you just pop my name, Claude Swanson, into Google, uh, the website will pop up first, and you can go there and find contact information and things like that. Uh, you know, one other point I wanted to make is that you know we went through a huge national debate recently about you know Obama and health care and things like that, but something that was never mentioned was alternative medicine. We spend one sixth of our gross national product on health care. It's all about uh, conventional uh, Western fix people up after they're sick type medicine. But alternative medicine of this type is much less expensive, and you can prevent people from having those expensive health problems if you use it properly. Right, so, and that's a discussion in, in itself about the competitive nature of medicine in this country. Yeah, but, it, but, but hopefully, you know, certainly this type of medicine seems to me to be the future and, you know, the way we, we ought to probably be looking at it as a way to improve our system. Well, yeah. we know it will be. It's just a matter of how long it takes to get there. <laughs> <laughs> so, Claude, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciated you um, not only being on the show, but I, I so appreciate the work you're doing in, in your life to bring this to the public attention. Yeah, thank you so much. Right. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at Progressive Radio Network. And I can be reached at peter at heartriver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. 
and thank you so much for listening.